There are holes for the Mark Podcast Show. The photographer who claimed to capture Abraham Lincoln's ghosts. The first photographers were neuromancers. Their work fixed faces in time, sending a flood of memories and a chasm between the living and the dead. As Bull walk against grief and loss, a picture of the loved one, which is more, once more, very thrill and more magical than anything that had existed before. Maybe it was inevitable that an innocent photographs, literally written in light, flicker between science and superstition, define our sense of tangibility. Cameras gazed into our lives. Was it possible they could see a little further too? As mentioned in the book by Peter Men and Men Su, the a part I tenuous A P P A R I T I O N I S T S and that's men mensu M A N S E A U offers a sensible insight history of the original spirit of photographer William Muller, whose rise and fall in the late nineteenth century put him at the centre of a debate between religion and fraud, and of course the military material reality of our immortal souls. Muller worked as an engraver in Boston, but he dabbled in photography on the side. His first spirit photo photography pho- photograph, sorry, developed in the early no- in the 1860s, came by surprise in a self-portrait he taken. He discovered a girl made of light. As Monsieur puts it, he identified a spiritual figure of his descent cousin, deceased cousin, gotten the photos of Curio, going to pass it around, gathering, garnering astonishment and acknowledgement acclaim from the city's thriving spiritual community. Muller, Muller, had stumbled and Whitley he later argued in the realm of science and memorism, as it had hurts ascribed him the same gifts he saw in clairvoyance and mediums. He was a man who breached a black curtain between worlds. It blurred his name in such papers as the banner of light, the herald of progress. As word spread, Muller's hobby became a lucrative business. Soon he was taking spirit photographs from dusk to dawn, summoning lost ones between beneath his spot skylight, dispensing solace to public idled by the rising death toll of the Civil War. His images retain their intimate macabre tint. Even now, his subjects assume stately, almost catatonic poses, a process requiring them to sit still for a full minute, the expression pensive and inscrutable, their arms stiff and expectant. As the spirits, they, they have the denatured touch of blighted leaves, tolescent smudges against a sooty black drop, and sometimes corrodes into personhood under scrutiny in the same way that their faces emerge from clouds. Staring at enough of them in sequence and you fell into a loop of cognitive dis, dis- seance. They look so fake, they may, must be real, and they're so real, they must be fake. Photography in the 19th century was a competitive live line. Muller's co- colleagues were deeply suspicious of him. The art of all was fugitive and alchemical enough in, 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 on his form. Merkel writes that he wet, that the wet plate collation process favoured at time had an air of con- construction around it, involving harsh chemicals, glass plate, and plenty of time in the dark. With their stained fingers, photographers were used to practice the black art, a term that resonated with the occult implications. If Muller was pushing the medium into overt metaphysics, his colleagues wanted to know how or to reel him as a swindler. A slew of his investigators visit Muller to investigate his methods, and most of contrived that his results were legitimate. Success had borrowed him, and a, a bet caused him. He expanded the operation to include a mail order service, sent a description of the spirit he hoped to see, plus seven dollars and fifty, 50 cents, and you too could see ghosts hold intercourse with mortals, as one spirit just put it. Then a stray visitor, a strudel, and eventually one of the spirits as his wife, 
not a problem. Her face fit, except his wife was still alive, and had posed at Mullins Gallery, well in advance of his elderly turn. The sceptics began to outnumber the believers, and Muller, cowed by, cowed by the loss of faith, eventually moved to New York, where he set up shop anew in 1868. By the following year, he had been formally accused of fraud and lacency and locked up in the tombs. The, the showing tell trial made headlines around the world. More than a matter of guilt of, or innocence, it seemed a referendum of the spiritists worldwide that Minlu offers a gripping account of the most of many witnesses appeared to Lord Willard's powers of deride him as a grift, grifter. But though it sowed the seeds of doubt, prosecution could never prove how Miller had perpetrated the dokes. So he was exonerated. Retreating in Boston, Miller most retired for spirit photography in his later years. Though he couldn't resist one high-profile client, Mary Todd Lincoln. Miller's grim portrait, the widowed first lady, depicted Ethel Abe, resting two comforting hands on her shoulders. Picture erased by it, but powerful emphasizes the peace and comfort to the weary, and Muller triumphed it as his hallmark. He saw himself as pur- purveyor of the bright, ineffectual rays of the spiritual sun. It is, if it is more credulous customers were too eager to bask in the rays who can blame them. In their throes of grief, no one can asked why the clouds are parting. You've been listening to the whole of your Mark Podcast Show and I've been talking about the photographer who claimed to capture Abraham Lincoln's ghost. <laughs>